it's almost like things are getting uh, flipped on their head. I want to go back to something that we talked about um, earlier, uh, because I think, that, again, the eight paradoxes that one tensions, it just happens to be one of the subjects that I've become obsessed with because I'm seeing it as core to leadership. And I'm going to tell I'm going to tell you why um, it's because about 10 years ago, I read I read a book about organizational turnarounds. It was by a guy by, uh, named Dr. Mark Rutland, and he was known in a very specific nonprofit space for helping to turn around well-known organizations uh, within the Christian ministry space. And he wrote something that I have never, I mean, it's the one thing that I remember from his book, and I remember the stories from his book too, but the one thing that he said that always stood out to me is that, he said, you know, when a lot of people come in and they decide they're going to do a turnaround or they're going to build something from scratch, leaders often think of um, like building things, like making a plan, getting raw materials and building things. He said, when it comes to effective organizational leadership, he said, it's less about building things and it's more about managing tensions. And what he talks about in his book is that in any organization, whether it's for-profit or not-for-profit, you have two um, energies at play. One is called chaos and the other is control. He said, chaos, these are your, your leaders, your creators, your producers, these salespeople. On the other side, you have control. These are your accountants, your lawyers, et cetera. And he said, there's always a continuum there. There's always a spectrum. And he said, good leaders know where to put the most weight and make sure that things are in balance so that the right amount of chaos gets done and things actually get produced and things get sold. But the, there's enough control to, you know, to keep from bankruptcy and uh, criminal charges and everything else from happening. So again, yeah. I love the idea of eight paradoxes because it falls into that. If there is a, and of course you mentioned them all, and you mentioned uh, you start off mentioning confidence and humility, but if there is something, if there is a, if there's one of those eight paradox tensions that you've noticed as you've been consulting with companies or organizations, you're like, man, this is one that I'm seeing become more and more an issue as far as companies lack it, and that if they put it into practice, it would really help them get from where they are to where they want to be. Yeah, I I, I go back to the I think great leaders are both stubborn and open minded. Um, the way I talk about tensions, Will, is this. Every organization has problems to solve and tensions to manage, and you got to treat them differently. Problems do need to be solved. We need to get rid of that thing, res resolve it, etc. Tensions are going to be with us all the time. I think, in my opinion, there's always going to be at least a slight tension between sales and fulfillment or operations. These people are selling like crazy, making stuff up sometimes. That's happened at the Maxwell organization a couple of times. But then fulfillment's going, wait a minute, that's not, you know, blah, 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 blah. And, and so you, you get the point. There's, there's different divisions in every company that has to do different tasks. Sometimes people are wired differently. But I think we're never going to completely get rid of the tension between sales and operations. So we need to know it's just, a, it's just there. Stop, stop getting mad at Bob or Susan. And learn to live with this and manage the tension. So that liberated me, like like you just said with with Mark Rutland, that just liberated me to go. Okay, I don't need to get rid of this. I need to live with it and make it work for us. So that's I think a good leader. What what a good leader has to learn to do.